Hello and welcome to Prime Sports with me, Razak Musbao. Let's start off with some boxing and former IBF bantamweight title holder, Joseph Agbeko says he has not been celebrated enough by Ghanaians for his achievement and contribution to the growth of boxing in Ghana. According to Agbeko, who now wants to be called Togbe Kaleto II, he feels unloved and hurt by the seeming disregard for his exploits, which he alleges is also because of his tribe. I do not have any issue with the Ghana Boxing uh, Authority. Authority. Uh, if I will have any issue, uh, maybe it will be an individual uh, people on the board who yeah. may have issues with me. Uh, I don't know if uh, for a tribal reason, uh, a tribal reason or not. Uh, I have I grew up in Bisi. I spent uh, most of my time in Bisi. Uh, so I see myself more of a gun than even an airway, you know. So uh, I don't know why, but the boxing community does not appreciate me, does not love me. They don't treat me like how they treat the other fighters. Uh, I don't know if because I'm from the Volta region or whatever, but I actually live there. But for some reason, there are a lot of people in there that they don't uh, like me. Uh, so you felt marginalized? Uh, even with the boxing, the Bukum Boxing Arena. Uh, when you go inside the Bukum Boxing Arena, yeah. there is a place where they have all the champions' picture in there. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, can, pick, I, I can even picture some of yeah. them. Yeah. When you go in there, you know, Joseph Agbeko uh, was not a fighter who won who just won a world title once. Uh, when you look at the champions, uh, from the great Azuma Nelson, DK Poison, everyone, uh, if you want to mention about three or four great champions among all the 10, you mention me uh, because I was two times world champion. Uh, I even added a bonus one, which is IBO, and IBO is not a regular yeah, yeah, world yeah, title. Yeah. So I would say two times world champion. Uh, Azuma was three times, Dana Okonedu was also, I think, uh, two or three times or two division. So, but I was behind those top great fighters. So I have achieved a lot in, in the boxing uh, fatality, you know. So there is no way anybody trying to put pictures of fighters who has achieved for Ghana and they wouldn't think about Joseph Agbaku. So you feel that people of Bukum don't appreciate you, and even the boxing... Uh, the boxing, I, I don't think I, 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 they don't, I don't respect you. I, it's not, I wouldn't say they don't, they don't appreciate me. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, but do you feel hurt by this? Come again, do you feel hurt that despite all the successes you've chalked, if you're putting up an air arena that is dominated by boxing legends and they don't consider you in there, it's, it's quite an insult. Do you, do you feel uh, hurt? Yeah, uh, I would say. Uh, yes, I feel hurt sometimes. Well, we'll try and uh, just get some bit of, uh, you know, information relative to his exclusion from the Bukum Boxing Arena, which appears to become, have become the, the facility, you know, to honor some of our boxing great. And I'll be speaking to my colleague, Nathan Lato, who worked closely with the Emporium. And of course, he was the master of ceremony on the day the Emporium was, you know, uh, launched. And also he served as chairman of the uh, committee that was responsible for the opening of that very boxing facility. Uh, Nat, thanks very much for joining us on Prime Sports tonight. And of course, you have worked closely, uh, you work closely, you know, as far as the construction and even the unveiling of the boxing arena at Bukum was concerned. And you have also followed very closely the, 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 the boxing career of Joseph Agbeko. So when he talks about the fact that he's a two-time world champion, you know a lot about that. But the big question is, why has his name or even his face been excluded from, you know, the Bukum Boxing Arena as far as the, you know, as he makes reference to people whose pictures and visuals have been put at the Emporium to celebrate them? Well, um, thank you very much for the time. Uh, first of all, we need to make a few corrections. Um, 
I served as the chair of the, the publicity committee, the media and publicity committee for the opening of the, the arena, okay? And then, um, of course, uh, you are right about my being the master of ceremony and the uh, pioneering ring announcer for uh, the maiden, you know, like the maiden fight night that, um, that, that started off all the action at the Bukum Boxing Arena. Now, um, let's place a few of the things in context. When you enter the Bukum Boxing Arena, you'd realize that there is, uh, there is a certain standard around in the stamps, and that is the inscription of names or the writing of names of boxing greats on the walls. Joseph Agbeko's name is on there. It's within the arena. Um, and that is when you are counting names of greats or names of relevant people in our boxing. So that, that has to be established and that has to be made as a very big reminder. Now, away from that, I think that this is a very unfortunate turn of events um, when it comes to our boxing and when it comes to how we appreciate the people who have broken their backs and made these massive achievements. Yeah. I do not think that uh, Agbeko has to, uh, you know, remind anybody of what he's done. I do not think that Azuma Nelson has to remind anybody of what he's done. I do not think that a Pele, uh, Stephen Apea, uh, you know, name them. They do not need to remind us of what they've done in our country and in our, you know, in our growth as a sporting nation. Because you see, when you get out there and you look at achievements, major achievements at that, when it comes to elite sport, we do have a sizable number. In boxing, we've got 10 countable world champions. We're looking for the 11th and it's been a struggle. And so he is right when he says that, um, and he rem I mean, when he says that, look, I'm, when you're counting people who've been maybe like two time yeah. or three time boxing world champions, yeah. then my name sure has to be, you know, uh, like a part of it, you know? So um, where, where I have the difficulty is that it, it's become, it's become like a norm for us to be having our legends remind us of what they've done for us. Okay, let me do a quick example outside of the boxing ring, and that will be um, Asamoah Jan. When Asamoah Jan, uh, you know, when Ghana did not participate in the 2018 uh, FIFA World Cup in Russia, you do remember that it took the BBC to come to Ghana to interview Asamoah Jan and let him relive the moment uh, when he scored all those six or seven goals at the FIFA World Cup. And the question I was asking myself is, where were we as a collective, as a media, as a, as a, as a collective here in Ghana? Where were we? Were we asleep? Or had we forgotten that Asamoah Jan had made such a substantial achievement for our country? Agbeko also touches on tribalism, which I believe is a very, very unfortunate uh, you know, uh, turn of events, if you, if you ask me. Mm. Because when he made that achievement for Ghana, he didn't make the achievement as an ever boxer. He went into the ring as, as, as a Ghanaian boxer. You know, he didn't go into the ring as an ever boxer. He didn't go into the ring as a, you know, yeah. as a boxer who is from the, the Volta region of Ghana mm. or a boxer who is born from a certain part of this country. Mm. He went there to represent the national flag on mm. each occasion. And mm. it is very important that we all remind ourselves of that. Mm. Um, he, he talks about the fact that he's not appreciated in, uh, you know, within the boxing community. And look, let's face it. When we're talking the boxing community, then we definitely are talking about, uh, you know, the greater Accra or the gas settlement areas. It, it, is, it is obvious. Mm. And he also reminds all of us about the fact that he did more growing up in these areas than the place uh, that his uh, ethnic skin is identified with, which is the Volta region. Mm. But in all of those conversations and in all the moments where people probably may have discriminated against him, unfortunately, 
I think that it is important that as a boxing collective, yeah. we all remind ourselves that not all the 10 boxing world champions have come from the greater Accra region. Yeah. In fact, three of them do not come from the greater Accra region. I'm mm. talking about the marvelous Nanaya Akunibi, Agbeko himself, and uh, Isaac Dogui of recent years. Yeah. And so it becomes very, very unfortunate that anybody will make any comments or anybody will extend a certain kind of behavior mm. to tell Joseph Agbeko that you are one of us, but you are not exactly one of us. Mm. You are 30% one of us and not 100% mm. one of us. I mean, it is Nat, very, very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah very unfortunate. Yeah. Now, but I just want to know, you know, we, we've seen this concern raised time and time again about appreciating some of our legends. In the case of Joseph Agbeko in particular, I mean, what in your view, having followed boxing and having followed some of these legends very closely, what in your view do you think will be, you know, will be described as being well appreciated enough? What do you think needs to be done for them to, you know, come to that place of satisfaction, of fulfillment that, yes, my country has, uh, you know, appreciated me, really appreciated the work I've done for them as far as putting gun on the map? What do you think really will be enough for them? I'd like to first of all start from what the state extended to Joseph Agbeko upon his winning the title. I do remember uh, the announcement by the then President J.A. Kufour that the nation was going to appreciate him with a vehicle. Of course, you cannot measure or quantify in monetary terms the, the value of the, the achievement that he has made. Yeah. I mean, you cannot measure it in any way. Yeah. It is a big deal. And it will take days for us to try to go into the details of what it means for our national psyche and what it means for our national image. Mm. That promise, even though it took a bit of a while, and I was very much involved in it. At the time, I was a journalist with the Graphic Sports newspaper. And I do remember that I was very much involved in the advocacy for fast-tracking the presentation of that vehicle. Mm. There was a VW Polo Saloon car, and it was presented to Joseph Agbeko as a token of the nation's appreciation to him. Now you put that one aside, and later on, towards the end of President Kofor's tenure, uh, you know, as president of Ghana, in the 2008 National Awards, mm. Joseph Agbeko and some other sporting legends were honored with grand medals of the Republic of Ghana. Mm. Um, so when you look at these two gestures, I would like to believe that when you look at the generality of, of achievements that have been made by sportsmen and women in other sporting disciplines, mm. it is at least, um, it may not be that substantial, but the, the presentation of the Grand Medal of the Republic of Ghana yeah. to Agbeko for that achievement, I believe mm. is something of worth mm. and something that he should always bask in mm. and something that should always encourage him Mm. Any time when those unfortunate incidents come up, yeah. because it was a big deal, mm. it is a great mm. honor uh, to, 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 to hold on to a grand medal of Ghana. Mm. And I think that it is also uh, pretty monumental and, part, and a part of our history, no matter how um, small the token may be, yeah. that the nation at least extended a gesture to mm. say thank you to him. There are isolated incidents, and you see, he did not go into details when he had the conversation with Muftal. But um, what you sense and what you feel is that there are some isolated incidents, probably comments that have been passed and all of that. And these things do happen to our sportsmen and women a lot. Mm. Look, I remember, uh, may God bless his soul, uh, the legendary Cesar Soul Jones I took with you when he was alive. Yeah. When he moved from Accra Hart to both Liberty Professionals. I remember one day, he... he he, walk, he was walking into the stands to confront a fan who had made a disrespectful comment towards him. Mm. But hey, look at Cesar Sojons Atupefio's achievements with Accra Hearts of Oak. Yeah. With the greater of, of, of respect, no other coach in the history of Accra Hearts of Oak has made that, those heights of achievement with, with, uh, with the club, Organa's oldest existing football club. Mm. So these achievements that sportsmen and women make and these little gestures that are extended to them by the state, no matter how small they are, must be reminders that in, in the general terms, there is a certain level of appreciation. Mm. But as a licensee of the Ghana Boxing Authority, 
and as a part of the boxing family, I'd like to say that, and I'd like to say this to our friends within the boxing fraternity. We need to show some respect. We need to put some respect on names. Mm. Um, and we need to understand that it takes a lot of work, a lot of pain, a lot of breaking of the back mm. to make these achievements. Mm. And so when these legends make these achievements, yeah. we need to put some respect on their names. Yeah. I mean, we, um, I know we don't have uh, all the time in the world, but yeah. in wrapping up this conversation, Val, you do remember the incident with uh, the FA official in France who made uh, the derogatory remarks about Zinedine Zidane, yeah. more or less to desecrate his name. You yeah. saw what happened to him. He was fired. In recent days, he had to resign. we've seen... We've, yeah, he was fired. Yeah. In recent days, we've seen a very unfortunate banter ensue between an executive council member of the Ghana Football Association yeah. and Stephen Appiah. Mm. It is a very, very unfortunate turn of events. Yeah. Considering what Stephen Appiah has invested in, 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 in serving the nation mm. from an individual point of view where he has taken Ghana's name and the achievements that he has made. Mm. So mm. when you see these kinds of banters ensue between a legend like Stephen Appiah and an administrator of the game, it becomes very, very worrying. Yeah, it becomes and very worrying. I do not believe that it is healthy. And yeah, and in wrapping up, I do not believe that this is a healthy mm. line that we're towing as a collective in sport. Mm. And we need to watch it. Yeah. We really need to watch it. Yeah, we need to watch it. Now, thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. And, of course, uh, we'll keep tabs on that very, very story and get back to you in case of any development. Uh, let's get to some football now. And it's Pando Hat of Lions. And they've kept the hope of qualifying for the Premier League alive after securing three vital points from a 24th fixture with Susu Bribri Sporting Club. The match hosted at the Pando Sports Stadium was rained off in the 16th minute on Sunday due to Heavy downpour. Pando Hearts of Lions lie on top of the league table with 56 points. Kwame Asari do, did come through with this report. The 24th fixture between Heart of Lions and Chishibibi FC was rained off on Sunday after a heavy downpour at the Kwando Sports Stadium. The match continued from the 16th minute on Monday at about 9 a.m. A 23rd minute rebound by Mustafa Yakubu secured all three points for Lions, stretching their zone three league table lead to 17 points ahead of second place Sempafi. Susubibi Sporting Club, led by the head coach David Nyaba, opened up and played all out in the second half, hoping to equalize to at least pick a point home. The centre referee disallowed a goal by the old Tafu Base Club and awarded a foul in favour of Heart of Lions for an earlier infringement on the goalkeeper. Both sides failed to convert chances created, leaving the scoreline at 1 0. The players, technical bench, and fans of Heart of Lions went into frenzy at the blast of the final whistle, knowing they have secured a spot in the Premier League despite having six more matches to play. The head coach of Heart of Lions, Salif Fatal, said the win brightens their chances of qualifying for the Premier League. It's not clear that uh, you know we, we've secured the qualification. I think as of last week, or uh, they were telling me we are already there. But I think that we still need more wins to, to, to secure the clear qualification. So today wins at least brighten the, the, the chances of our qualification. Of course, uh, it, 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 it has kept us on top of the league with uh, I think almost 17 points now, and I'm sure we are we are in the Premier League now as I'm speaking. Uh, when the points were seven, uh, already people were also already saying that we've qualified. Then we kept winning, and uh, now the points margin is too much. So we, 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 these six matches, we are not going to relax and say we are already in the Premiership. We're going to approach it like what we did from the beginning of the league. So of course, these six matches, we are going to go all out. Possibly we get all points from those six matches. Heart of Lions will travel to Tema to play Golden Kick Sporting Club in the 25th fixture of the Access Bank Division 1 League. Fred Kwame Asari. Joy News, Bandu. Now let's get to the camp of the Ghana Black Princesses and they've intensified training for the Waffle Zone B tournament slated for June this year at the Barbera Sports Stadium. Now, according to head coach of the side, you see the Bazigi, the girls have shown signs of improvement ahead of the tournament but insist more work need to be done for the girls to be fully ready for the tournament. There is a lot of work to be done. 
because the crop of players that went to the Costa Rica World Cup will still not have all of them here. So transitionally, we have to bring on board uh, the, uh, the maidens players and because they didn't play uh, the World Cup, you know, we could not just pick um, most of them so far as uh, playing a high level competition is concerned. However, we depended on the, um, the database given as by the, the technical head of the Black Maidens. And then also I went around to scout for players during the league matches and uh, bringing the potentials together. So looking at um, the task ahead, we have very limited time and already we have some household names. Fortunately, we have some household names in the team that is under 20 and also uh, very good potentials in the under 17. Immediately we are going to blend them together to raise a formidable team, especially now that we are hosting. We need to do all that we can to impress Ghanaians, to live up to expectations. So this one, I don't even need the FA to give me a target. I know what it takes to, I mean, get up there. And for that matter, I've already discussed with the technical team to let us all work assiduously in order to achieve our set target. Now, the day two of the 2023 ITF Western Africa Regional Table Tennis Championship to Ghana closer, eclipsing the medal record from last year as the men and women's team won medals to continue a convincing start to the competition. Now, Joy Sports Lawrence Beidou was at the Bukum Boxing Arena earlier today and came through with this report. Ghana's quest to win more medals at the 2023 Western Africa Table Tennis Championship got off to a good start on day two following the men and women team's participation in the medal stage on Tuesday at the Trust Sports Emporium. The women's team recorded a 3-1 victory over Benin to claim the silver medal. Coach of the women's team, Ebenezer Annan White, talked about the importance of Ghana's win. This means a lot for Team Ghana because she played against the Benin top player. In terms of singles now, she is qualified. We are qualified to the uh, round of 16. Yes. So from here, we are moving to the round of 16. Ghana's in Tiakwabi beat competition from Benin to book a place in the knockout stages of the women's singles and says she hopes to win a medal from there. This win is a very great win for me. As you can see, this is my second win. Um, I'm, I'm topping my, my group and I think um, it is a, a good opportunity for me to move to the next stage. So I think um, with the next stage, I will do my maximum best to win my subsequent uh, matches. Belo Fatimo has won the Western African Singles Championship title on three occasions and told Joy Sports she hopes to defend the colors of Nigeria once again in Accra. Well, there are many best players here. Yeah. They have just, <laughs> there are many, many best players here. Yeah. They are because of good players, of the Bene, the Ghanaians. They are good players. In this West African Region Championship, um, I've won it three times and um, I will try my best to defend my cup. Yeah. In the men's team game, Ghana faced off competition from Ivory Coast with both teams taking home bronze medals. Despite defeat in the men's singles, Ghana's coach says the team put in a good performance and hopes to get better as the competition progresses. Um, as a coach, I'm really impressed with the performance of our boys. In Prime Sports tonight with me, Rosak Musbao, will leave you with some sports. Bye, but there's more on myjoonline.com for slash sports.